Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to define the Web3 tech stack because if you're learning how to program Web3 dApps, if you're learning how Web3 works, what kind of different technologies are relevant for you, then you will learn a lot from this video. This video will really help you. So click the like, click the bell if you like this kind of topics and these kinds of videos. First and foremost, we have to understand that in all ecosystems, there are different levels of abstraction. You have low level technologies, for example, such as the blockchain itself is the lowest level. This can be compared to the CPU in your computer. And while the CPU is important, you rarely interface with your CPU as a developer. You rarely talk directly to the CPU as a developer if you want to build a game or a website or a desktop app. You rarely do that. Instead, you use the different APIs and platforms in order to build your applications in the traditional Web2 environment. When you are building games, when you're building websites, when you're building apps, and so on and so forth. And the same thing applies to blockchains, crypto, and Web3. You rarely speak directly to the blockchain. Instead, you use different platforms and tools in order to speed up your development and to make it more pleasant, productive, so that you can reach your goals and amaze your users, most importantly, because it's all about the users. What can you offer your users? So while you can see a summary of the Web3 stack on the picture right now on the screen, let me remove all of it except for the first layer. And the first most basic layer is, of course, the blockchains themselves, is the protocols. So here you have Ethereum, you have Solana, Binance, Polygon, Avalanche, and a lot of other blockchains. Now, in order to speak to these blockchains, you need to run a so-called node. So when you run a node, which is a piece of software you run on your server, you can now get the data from the blockchain because this node will be speaking to other nodes on the blockchain that, on the network that other people run. And um, a blockchain really, it's a network of computers, it's a network of nodes. And these nodes, they communicate all the information about the state of the blockchain to each other. So in order to get the data from the blockchain normally, you would spin up your own node and then you would join the network so, so that all other nodes would now be sharing all the data about the state of the blockchain directly to you. Now, while you can do this, nobody does it. Nobody runs their own nodes if you're developing something. Why? Because running a node, it's a full-time job. You need a full-time team. You need to have maintenance. You need to have reliability. You need to have backups. You need to have load balancing. So that's why we have different services that provide nodes for you. So here you have Infura, you have Alchemy, you have Chainstack, you have GetBlock, you have Pocket Network. The interesting thing with Pocket Network is that it is decentralized, which is very, very special. You have QuickNode, you have a Run RPC on Solana. So by talking to these different node providers, by using their nodes, you can speed up your development drastically. But at the same time, the problem with speaking to the nodes is that you cannot get a lot of data from the, from the nodes. The nodes can give you raw data from the blockchain, but that raw data is very useless. For example, a node can never tell you the balances of your users. It cannot just give you a list of tokens your user has. You would think that a node can do that, but it can't because all tokens are individual smart contracts and a node does not know what smart contracts your user has interacted with. The node can only give you the balance of a specific smart contract. So you can ask, hey node, give me the balance for this user for this specific token and the node will tell you. But surprisingly, you cannot ask the node, hey, give me all the tokens that the user has or give me all the NFTs that the user has. So that's why normally you as a developer, you rarely speak to nodes either. This is not something you would want to do because this is low level technology. It's kind of like speaking to the CPU when you're building a website. It's not something you do, why? Because uh, it cannot tell you a lot of things. You speak to the CPU, you need to spend a lot of time building your abstraction around the CPU. And the same thing with nodes. So the next level in this stack, in this, level, in this abstractions is, are the APIs. So the different API providers like Morales, Covalent, the Graph, which is really a protocol. You can run your own the Graph node in order to build your own API, but this will require you to have a backend team. Uh, QuickNode, Alchemy, BitQuery, Biconomy, they have different APIs that connect to the nodes behind the scenes. So you don't have to do this. 
So all of these different APIs, they would connect to the nodes. And as you can see, some providers like QuickNode, they have both nodes and some APIs or Alchemy, they have some nodes and some APIs. But so you as a developer, you, you will most likely speak to the APIs, at least to the APIs. And I will show you even better ways to do it. Uh, but this is how you would normally talk to the blockchain through an API provider, because API provider can give you all kinds of data. It can give you data about the balances, about the users, about everything you need to know, which is already pre-compiled and pre-calculated. Something that you cannot do if you are just using the nodes. This is important. So for example, if you go to docs.moralis.io, you will find Web3 API here in the corner. And you see, for the account of a user, you can get all kind of, kinds of information. You can get uh, balances, token balances, NFTs, transactions, and so on and so forth. Um, for a token, you can get a bunch of information. For example, the NFT metadata, NFT owners, you can search NFTs. So this is the kind of um, endpoints, the kind of interface you can actually achieve something with. You can actually be productive with. And this is important because at the end of the day, it's all about productivity. How much can you achieve? How much can your team achieve in what amount of time? So this is an important part of the Web3 stack. Next, moving up the abstraction, we do have the platforms. And here you have legacy platforms, like for example, Firebase in Web2 or Amazon or Azure, this is legacy. And you have Web3 platforms such as Morales. Now, what does a platform do? Well, if you are to use these different APIs without using a platform, you have to run your own backend. In order to achieve anything as a Web3 developer, you need to have a backend team where you connect all of the different APIs together, where when you build your database, where you build your login features, when you build your user authentication features, and so on and so forth. While if you use something like Morales, you get auth, which means that you can log in users on any blockchain and when and you just do it with one line of code in your JavaScript SDK or with one line of code in your Unity game engine and soon Morales is going to more and more different platforms, you get things such as sync, which means that when your users do something on chain, Morales gives you a database and in real time inserts the data into the database about the user activity. So Morales, you can think of it kind of like Firebase, but for Web3. Also, it includes different things like SMS, email, and push notifications that you can alert your users. You can save user data. You can have real-time database. You can have socket connections so that when something happens on-chain or something happens with your users, you can get a socket connection to your front-end without building it out yourself. So as you can see, a platform is more end-to-end -end experience. It's more an end-to-end -end full experience where you get all the tools needed to go from zero, from an idea, to a production app. And in the legacy space, you have Firebase doing this kind of thing or serverless AWS Lambda doing this kind of thing where you can connect AWS Cognito and other services. So while this is legacy, you cannot use Web3 when you use Azure or AWS or Firebase, with Morales you can. So Morales is the platform where you get a lot of backend for free. You don't have to do anything. It's already pre-configured. If you use the APIs only, for example, and Morales has APIs as well, like I showed you, it's still that you need to run your own backend. You need to have your own stack. If you don't use the APIs, you just use the nodes, here you're gonna spend six, eight months just uh, working with the blockchain, getting the data, indexing the blockchain, and so on and so forth. And if you run your own nodes, I mean, here, it, you, you, you've just made your life 10 times harder uh, for nothing. It's kind of like if you didn't use HTML to create your website, instead you spoke to the CPU, like we discussed in the past. So I hope that makes sense, what the platform is. And in order to try it, you can just go to Morales. Uh, and um, if you go to docs.morales.io, you can find all of the information. And you can see how to log in a user, for example, it's very simple. You write one line of code, this works cross-chain. As soon as your user logs in, in your database now, you have all the different information about your users. And most importantly, this database updates in real time, so that when users do things on chain, your database is updated. You can do all kinds of things, like for example, uh, get the database, write custom cloud code, upload files, 
use IPFS, use plugins in order to connect to other APIs and to other services. For example, in order to implement a DEX, you can use a Morales plugin in order to implement a DEX using one inch DeFi smart contracts. We we'll make it very, very easy. So on a high level, I hope you understand what the platform is. And of course, then on top of platforms, you have applications. And the applications use the different platforms, APIs, nodes, and chains in an easy way by just talking to the platform layer. This is important. So when you're building your app, you need to be speaking to the platform layer most importantly. In some cases, you need to reach down and access some specific APIs still. That still happens. What rarely happens is that you go all the way down and speak to the nodes because it's inefficient. And of course, what almost never happens nowadays is that you run your own node because it's very, very time consuming and you don't gain a lot. You don't gain a lot because there are many uh, providers and there are many platforms that you can use. So I hope that clarifies the Web3 tech stack and I hope you understand the different levels of abstraction. If you like this kind of video, click the like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section which other videos you want to see, what more you want us to explore, and we will of course do that for you. That being said guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon.